Hello, David Akubian, Bear Woods Photography. Um, a couple weeks ago, I did a video with my first impressions of the new Tamron 50 to 400 millimeter lens, um, the E mount for Sony full frame. Of course, they will work on crop sensor as well. Um, and I, I did some things, just some features of the lens, but um, I mentioned I'm, I was going to Alaska. Um, I'm back from Alaska now, so I wanted to give you second impressions of, of what I think in, of the lens and how it performed. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm extremely impressed. Um, just the general size and the weight of it, and I've got the optional tripod collar on here right now. Um, because I did use it a lot. I, I put it in the up position when I'm carrying it on the boat, when I'm holding it. Um, I found the size and the weight of it um, very impressive and very helpful. Uh, we would spend a lot of time on boats. We would take a float plane over to Crescent Lake and we would photograph bears. Um, you can get pretty close to the bears there. It's a different type of an, of an environment. Um, the bears just walk freely around. They, you're, like I said, you're in a boat. They don't come out to the boats. Um, they coexist, if you, if you will, with the, the people that are out there. They don't bother the fishermen. Um, the fishermen don't bother the bears. The photographers don't bother the bears. The bears don't bother the photographers. So long story short, um, what really works well on an excursion like that is the ability to photograph up close with the bears, um, but not have the fatigue. You can't use a tripod, you can't use a monopod, so you're hand holding it all day. And the lighter the lens, the better. Um, I mentioned in my first video, it's about 20 ounces lighter. Um, someone got upset that that wasn't in grams. I don't know what it is in grams, it's 20 ounces. Um, Google it, find out what the difference is in grams. I only know ounces. Um, sorry for that. Um, but I, I found that the 20 ounces that it is lighter, so that's a little bit over a pound, really made a difference in holding that lens all day. Because, well, I say all day, the excursions are four hours, five hours long, and you constantly were holding it up, following the bears, doing different things with the bears. Um, there were days that, that it rained um, or that it would drizzle. So if you wanted to capture the scenery around it, you either had to carry a second lens. Traditionally, you would have to carry a second lens and a second body, which there wasn't necessarily room all the time, or you would have to change lenses. But the advantage to this, having that 50 millimeters, um, was really great because you could simply zoom out and you could, you know, capture a scenic image of the beauty of Crescent Lake with all the fall colors, the bears in the image as well. Um, very, very, very easily done. I was using it on the Sony A1. I tested it on the A9 II and I also shot it on the A6600, which is the crop sensor body. Um, I just found that it was extremely convenient to have that ability to do it. Um, there were few times that I said, I would like to have 100 more millimeters or 200 more millimeters because you can get close enough to the bears that you don't have to do that. And when you couldn't get really super tight on them, it was okay because you got um, the fall colors behind them. So it, it, it almost enhanced your, your experience in your images a little bit. So I did find that very, very helpful. Um, I would say a 10 out of 10 um, for an excursion lens, um, being lightweight, more compact, uh, the ability to shoot off the boat made it a lot easier. So uh, definitely I give it a 10 out of 10. The vibration compensation worked great. Again, being able to hold, hand hold it um, was perfect. You know, I did shoot comparison images with the 150 to 500, um, equally as sharp, if not sharper. Um, just simply because you were, you, you were able to get a little more into it. Um, I did find that when I was using the 150 to 500, there were times that I could not zoom out far enough. And that's why I say 10 out of 10 on an excursion lens. For the landscapes that I did, 
Uh, like I said, it was it was about peak color in the Kenai Peninsula where we were at in Alaska. And I found that one day we were out shooting and um, Cecil Holmes, who's my teaching partner um, and also an, uh, an ambassador with Tamron as well, made the comment, God, I really wish we had a macro lens to shoot these leaves. And I said, well, we do. And I pulled the lens out uh, and we started to shoot. And we got curious as to how close you could get with 50 millimeters. And literally, I'll try to include an image to show how close it is. But literally, the subject was about here when it was at 50 millimeters. Now, the really neat thing is um, you could zoom in a little bit and still be in focus. You could move the camera back a little bit, zoom in a little bit, still be in focus. You, As you zoomed in, you did have to move back sometimes but it was usually a play of about 10, 15, maybe 20 millimeters in zoom length that you had to, you could you could get into focus before you had to move back six inches, maybe at the end, I think I was 39 inches, so 40 inches away from the subject at 400 millimeters, somewhere in that range. Um, but I found even at that, it's a fantastic zoom lens. And I'm gonna show you some of the images, I'll put these in there as well, the aspen leaves covered with, with some dew drops on them. Um, I just think that the people that saw the lens and that I let play with it on the, on the, on the trip as well, um, they immediately referred to it as the perfect travel lens. I still think that, that in some situations you do need 28 millimeters, 24 millimeters, but I would say for this trip, it was probably the perfect travel lens that you could have had because you're you're not shooting a lot of 28 millimeter landscapes up there. Most of what you're shooting was 50 to 200. So I think that that from that aspect, it probably for Alaska could be a a, a perfect travel lens. Um, I'm just really super pleased with it. Focus was extremely fast. Uh, tracking was incredible. Um, I was using the eye focus uh, feature of the A1 and whether I was using it on uh, humans, wildlife or birds, it was it did great. So everything in it tracked really well. Just low light performance was good. There was one time we were out in Kachemak Bay in Homer doing a, a boat trip. Uh, it was very dark, very overcast, very moody and it had no issues whatsoever, you know, doing that focus in the low light. Um, and again, the vibration compensation in a situation where the boat is rolling, um, you know, you did have to use a little higher shutter speeds at times, but when the water was calm and it was dark, you, you had no issues it focusing in the dark or near dark. Um, there were times that, you know, uh, even at 250 millimeters uh, at F8, I still was at like 6,400 IS, so it was that dark. So my my second impressions are the same as my first impressions, but even more so favorable towards the lens. Um, again, you know, I was very, very lucky. I'm, I'm one of the Tamron Image Masters, which is part of their ambassador program, and Tamron was able to get me um, a copy of the lens to take with me, and I'm very, very grateful for that because I think that it really um, enhanced my trip and enhanced my experience up there. There was one day that um, we went to the Bears three different times. There was one day that I let my teaching partner, Cecil, use the lens, and I shot the 150 to 500. Um, and I, I continually kept saying, golly, I'm in too close. I'm in too close. And I really wish that I'd have had that, that additional 100 millimeters to move back, so that 150 down to 50. So really great. Uh, this morning I did take it down to, because I'm going to ship it back, um, I did take it down to some local uh, gardens down here or a sunflower patch down the street from me that uh, grew and was sort of blooming while I was away. And I'm going to try to throw an image or two in from the sunflowers as well. But just, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with the lens. Where I see this lens shining the most is when you're looking for a lens to do um, regular because you know 50 millimeters is considered normal vision you know regular to uh, telephoto landscapes and wildlife and macro work you can cover every bit of that with that lens 
The only other lens you'd have to throw into your bag would be something to do wide angle if you're in a situation where you were going to be photographing interiors or anything. So, you know, my, my feelings are it's a great addition to your bag. It, it doesn't necessarily replace a 150 to 500 because there will be times that you may need that 100 millimeters extra, um, but it definitely can uh, enhance what you're doing um, with that, that four, up to that 400 millimeters. So thumbs up for, for Tamron for just another great lens. Um, I, I really hate having to take it down and sending it back tomorrow. Um, but I do want to thank you guys again for getting it to me. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you again. Um, I will have a link in this video that will also take you back to that initial first impression video. Uh, if not, just go to my, my page and you can see it or my, my YouTube site. But again, thank you. Thumbs up if you can. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the little bell down there. Any comments, questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. But thank you again, Tamron, and thank you guys again for watching the video.